Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Lebrick. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received a cable of congratulations from His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa on the occasion of Eid Al Fitr. His Royal Highness wished His Majesty abundant health and happiness in the Kingdom of Bahrain and his people, further progress and prosperity under his leadership, and the Arab and Islamic nations many happy returns. His Majesty sent a cable of thanks to His Royal Highness, congratulating him on this occasion and wishing him abundant health and happiness. His Majesty wished His Royal Highness the Kingdom of Bahrain, the Arab and Islamic nations many happy returns. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa exchanged cables of congratulations with their Majesty's Excellencies and Highnesses, leaders of Gulf Arab and Islamic countries, marking Eid Al Fitr. His Majesty the King wished them good health and happiness, and in their, to their countries and people more progress, prosperity, and well-being. Praying to Allah the Almighty to bestow on uh, this blessed occasion to these countries and their people progress and prosperity. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa exchanged Eid al Fitr greetings with leaders, Crown Princes, and Prime Ministers of GCC Arab and Islamic countries. His Royal Highness expressed his congratulations on the occasion and wished their countries and people many happy returns and further growth and prosperity. The Minister of Tourism, Fatima bin Jafar al Zayrafi, has affirmed the need to back tourism projects and activities, stressing their importance as key contributors to urban and economic growth. She was speaking during a field tour of a number of tourism projects being carried out by an siege company in Delmonia Island, the Canal View, and the Mall of Delmonia. Al Zayrafi discussed issues and initiatives of common interest to explore joint opportunities and partnership with the private sector per the Tourism Strategy 2022 2026. The Minister also inspected the company's projects in Salman City to get updated on their development on the seafront. She listened to a detailed briefing by Nasij Company Chief Executive Amin al arayyad stressing the ministry's keenness on optimizing the tourism services and promoting partnerships with the private sector. Bahrain will take part in the annual Arabian Travel Market, which will be held on May 1st until the 4th. The 2023 edition is expected to attract up to 2,000 exhibitors from all over the world. Tourism Ministry Minister Fatima bin Jafar al held a meeting with officials and directors of hotels and other hospitality companies, which will take part in Bahrain's pavilion. Bahrain Tourism and Exhibition Authority, BTEA, Chief Executive Officer Dr. Nasser Al-Qaidi has also attended the session, which focused on preparations to take part in the annual event event and further promote the kingdom as a leading destination in the region. The minister stressed the importance of focusing on countries that export the most tourists and the main tourism markets in the world by enhancing joint cooperation at the regional and international levels. The ministry will hold meetings with media representatives in the Arabian travel market and decision makers in major companies specialized in incentive packages for conferences and exhibitions from all participating countries. Asserafi added that the aim is to strengthen cooperation with partners and investors in the sector and attract more visitors to Bahrain from tourist exporting countries around the world within the framework of the objectives of the Tourism Strategy 2022-2026. Eid Gudua is considered one of the basic features during the days of Eid days and a tradition when receiving guests in Bahraini houses. The Gudua is distinguished by a special traditional favor, flavor. This uh, form of hospitality includes many sweet dishes that shops in Bahrain are proficient in preparing, especially during these days. Bahraini popular sweets uh, with uh, their various flavors top the list of Eid desserts in Bahrain. Every house is key to host these traditional foods. Arabic coffee, distinguished by its aroma, and good taste adorns hospitality tables as the shops are roasted to be ready for the family's hospitality on the days of Eid with the authentic Bahraini flavor to complement the Eid days or the happy days of Eid. The General Directorate of Port Security at the Ministry of Interior is one of the departments whose role is prominent during Eid al-Fitr holiday. The Directorate is working diligently in accordance with set plans to facilitate the procedures for the transit and movement of travelers through the Kingdom's ports during the Eid holiday. These efforts aim for maintaining safety and security of travelers in particular and the Kingdom of Bahrain in general. The Labour Market Regulatory Authority, the LMRA, conducted a joint inspection campaign in the Capital Government in coordination with the Nationality Passports and Residence Affairs, NPRA, of the Ministry of Interior and the Capital Government Police Directorate. The campaign resulted in reporting a number of violations related to the labour market and residency laws and were referred for legal action. LMRA stressed its commitment to report any violation through a continuous and intensive inspection plan in coordination or cooperation with the relevant government entities. 
societies. The Labour Market Regulatory Authority renewed its call on all members of the society to support the efforts of government agencies to address illegal labour practices. Calling on the public to report violations by filling the electronic form on LMRA's website, www.lmra.gov.bh, or calling the authority's call center on 175-06055. In international news, Sudan's army said it had agreed to help evacuate foreign nationals as gunfire and airstrikes echoed across Khartoum despite promises by wearing sides to cease fire for three days on the occasion of Eid al-Fitr holiday. The statement uh, citing Army Chief Abdel Fattah al-Burhan came after promises by rival Rapid Support Forces RSF leader Mohamed Hamdan Degalo to open airports for evacuations in the cities of Umdurman and Bahri. Fighting intensified late on Saturday morning after a relative lull with airstrikes near the state a broadcaster and gun battles in several areas. A huge cloud of black smoke was seen rising from Khartoum airport and the sound of shooting and artillery bombs. There has been no sign yet that either side can secure a quick victory or is ready to back down and talk. The World Health Organization said that 413 people have died in the current Sudan conflict, while the UN Children's Agency said children are paying a high price with at least nine reportedly killed in the fighting and more than 50 badly injured. A WHO spokesperson said according to figures from the government in Sudan, 413 people have died and 3,551 injured in the conflict. She said that there had been 11 verified attacks on health facilities, including 10 since April 15th. A large number of people are trapped and do not have access access to electricity. UNICEF also has reports of children sheltering in schools and care centers while fighting rages, uh, rages around them and of children's hospitals forced to evacuate as shelling moves closer. WHO has previously called for both sides of the conflict to open humanitarian passage for health workers, patients and ambulances. The International Organization for Migration said a humanitarian worker was killed in Sudan on Friday after his vehicle was hit by crossfire as he tried to move his family to safety. The Sudanese man is the fourth UN employee to be killed since fighting broke out six days ago between the army and a paramilitary force. The worker was traveling with his family near El Abed, a town southwest of Khartoum, when he was shot. The organization, which helps meet the needs of some 3.7 million displaced people in the country, said in the same statement that its work in Sudan was currently suspended. Emirati astronaut Sultan and Niyadi has sent Eid al-Fitr greetings from space alongside his mascot for the nation's space mission, its color for stuffed toy Suhail. Sharing a video on Twitter accompanied by Arabic music, he wished his followers, family and the UAE a blessed Eid, saying that he usually, he usually the Eid is with the Eid, was with the family and children, but today he is with Suhail on the International Space Station. He added that on this occasion he sends greetings to the leaders of the UAE, his family, friends and his followers, wishing that this Eid brings peace, happiness and goodness to the whole world. He concluded the video by sending Suhail the Arabic name for the star Canopus floating into the atmosphere. The holiday of Eid al-Fitr ushered in a day of prayers and joy for Muslims around the world on Friday. After the Ramadan month of fasting, Muslims celebrate Eid al-Fitr with feasts and family visits. In Bosnia and Herzegovina, Eid al-Fitr has a very special place. From the early morning hours, male members of the family go to pray Fajr and then they pray Eid prayers come home, congratulate each other, and perform Eid duties. The most common Eid lunch in, uh, it begins with soup, which is followed by a stew, cabbage stuffed with meat, vegetable broth, and similar dishes. Then comes the pie, grilled meat with vegetables, and many more. Desserts are also a very important element of Eid tables. This holiday represents a special joy for children. It is a tradition that children visit elderly relatives and neighbors and get gifts with money, chocolate, or candy. The first day of Eid is spent with the family that gathers at the house of the oldest member. On the second day, Muslims visit the cemetery. The second day of Eid is also known as the Day of the Martyrs, and the third day is reserved for gathering with friends and acquaintances. Eid is also a day of reconciliation and forgiveness. It is the day when all animosity is forgotten. Mm-hmm.